start by uh, thanking uh, Jeff, of course, in particular, because the last time in Canada, I think you were the one who said, the next one is going to be in Sydney, and can you come and speak? So uh, it's a great opportunity and privilege for me to represent uh, the social marketing company Bangladesh. Of course, the issues that were discussed uh, so far uh, are somewhat different than the ones that we face in the third world. Thanks. All right, this is better. Uh, you know, we are dealing with poverty, uh, uh, child health, diarrheal disease management, family planning, a lot of issues that uh, confront us day to day. Um, and also, uh, in, in some ways, I think much of the social marketing that we practice are, are different because the challenges are different, the environment is different. So I'm here to share with you what social marketing company in Bangladesh has done so far. There's some key questions that we need to uh, face with every day, those donor-funded social market programs, is how do you evolve in sustainable ways? Uh, how do you continue to provide, uh, meet the needs of the poor or the underprivileged while continuing to grow and innovate? The one model that we have tried successfully is the SMC cross-subsidy model, which I'm going to present to you today. Uh, before I start, uh, I want to define financial sustainability as we see it is one that you are able to um, the, ensure an inflow of funds from a sustainable source to meet or exceed your total cost, including commodity cost. My content, uh, I'll talk about, I'll introduce uh, SMC, the success story, and then talk about the strategies and implications. Can you run the video? Bangladesh, 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 Bangladesh. When the sun sinks in the west, die a million people. Unisho Ekatu. বিশ্বের বুকে মাথা উঁচু করে দাঁড়ায় একটি গর্বিত দেশ বাংলাদেশ শুরু হয় নতুন যুদ্ধ দেশ করার যুদ্ধ কিন্তু কয়েক বছরের মধ্যেই উন্নয়ন কাজে অন্তরায় হয়ে দাঁড়ায় জ্যামিতিক হারে বৃদ্ধি পাওয়া জনসংখ্যা জনসংখ্যা নিয়ন্ত্রণে পরিবার পরিকল্পনাকে জাতীয় নীতিমালায় অন্তর্ভুক্ত করে শুরু হয় সরকারের সাহসী ও সময়োপযোগী পদক্ষেপ সরকারের এই উদ্যোগকে সফল করতে ভিন্ন মাত্রা যোগ করে ইউএস এআইটি এর নতুন এক কনসেপ্ট সোশ্যাল মার্কেটিং ওয়েল many of you have probably heard john bias's song uh, but that's the context in social marketing started in bangladesh uh, it began in 1974 as a family planning social marketing project It was set up by Population Services International, PSI, and with commodities and grant support from USAID. So the primary purpose was to address the rapid population growth uh, by increasing availability to subsidize contraceptives through the private sector. So there are three major focus is on availability, subsidized contraceptives, and the private sector. The whole focus was on building volumes, building CYPs. Many of you know what CYPs are, but it's the number of contraceptives needed to protect one person, one couple from an unplanned pregnancy. Little focus on sustainability. For the first time, SMC, SMC diversified uh, outside family planning by introducing ORS in 1985. And in 1990, it became a non-profit company limited by guarantee with a voluntary board of directors. Uh, I think she put on the wrong presentation, but nevertheless, uh, SMC actually owns a for-profit company called SMC Enterprise. And it's a classic social marketing program which has all elements of the marketing mix, all the four Ps, or maybe the five Ps since yesterday. 
Uh, it markets, markets a whole range of family planning products that includes condoms, pills, IUDs, implants, injectables. It also markets a number of health products that includes ORS, zinc, micronutrients, sprinkles, sanitary napkins, and so forth. It is, in terms of uh, CYP, it is the third largest contraceptive social marketing program as per USAID Knowledge for Health website. And in 2014, it delivered 4.3 million CYPs through sales of 155 million condoms, 40 million cycles of pills, and 1.4 million injectables. So the size of the organization is huge. It's huge, it is not, you know, it takes a lot. And this is not, it does not include the 540 million uh, uh, ORS that we sell every year. The company, sorry, the company operations are quite diverse. SMC does its own distribution through 12 area offices that reaches out to 250,000 outlets annually. That's a lot of outlet. Uh, these include pharmacies, grocers, uh, NGOs, kiosks. We are national, and this has been one of, one of our greatest strengths. It manufactures ORS. We are the largest manufacturing facility, I think, in the region. Imports condoms, pills, and others through contract manufacturing. So there's a local manufacturing process that encourages private sector to produce contraceptives. It does extensive brand advertising and promotion. That has been the demand creation part of it, other than the market penetration, has been one of the critical factors. And these have been largely based uh, on good consumer insights, good qualitative research. The nonprofit part of it, uh, there's a, a behavior change communication component uh, through community mobilization and mass media. We manage health networks. There's a Blue Star network of informal private sector providers that are 6,000 in number. We have 550 uh, providers, graduate providers offering long acting methods and then do a lot of training uh, formal, of non-formal health practitioners. So it's a complex operation. A lot of activities are going on. Uh, I'm not dwelling into what those specific activities are or how we do marketing, but I'm going to talk about the magnitude of the operations and then how did we make it sustainable. So what's been SMC's success story? So what, you know, what have we done? Well, we've been around for 40 years as a project uh, to a donor, to a fully sustainable organization. Uh, in 2014, SMC uh, uh, turnover was $40 million and we earned a surplus of $3 million for a project to a company, that's not bad. We represent 30% of the national CPR. So out of every 10 contraceptive user, three uses SMC uh, contraceptives. Uh, as compared to 5% uh, that is being contributed by the entire NGO community. So SMC is big in numbers there. Since inception, uh, according to the PSI impact calculator, SMC operations uh, have averted 16 million unintended pregnancies, 1.2 million deaths of children under five, and 106.3 million dallies, which is basically the year lost due to ill health disability or early, early death. So the, as you know, Bangladesh has made significant uh, progress towards MDG 4 and 5. And I think we are been a, next to the government, we have been a major contributor to that. So how do you manage growth? I mean, how do you manage a, a, an environment uh, where growth is driven by donor funded commodities? And, uh, and you know that Donor funding is not guaranteed in terms of usage, time, volume. Um, so the CYPs and the income that you generate from these uh, sales is not really sustainable. Uh, so what do you do? Uh, but in, in Bangladesh, uh, there were significant opportunities that SMC could take advantage of. One was that we had a vibrant private sector. There, were, there was a growing economy and there were people whose uh, income were increasing so they could afford to pay higher prices. Uh, the ORS, this is a great, sorry. What happened? Okay, big success story, as you can see. Um, 
this is when we got into manufacturing and you can see that uh, since manufacturing, the slope has gone up significantly. And it shows the, the, the demand that existed in the market which we were not a, being able to fulfill prior to manufacturing. And ORS is a product that saves lives, you know, diarrheal disease management, Diarrheal disease was one of the largest killer, uh, not only in Bangladesh, in many third world countries. And ORS is a very simple solution. It's basically oral, oral rehydration therapy. You give uh, water, saline, and glucose uh, into the body and it prevents the child from getting dehydrated and prevents death. It's uh, one of the big contribution of the ICDDRB, uh, the cholera hospital in Bangladesh. Uh, so, uh, we, in, when we got into it, uh, this provided a lot of funds that we needed to cross-subsidize. So, we were dealing in a, in a market that provided a lot of opportunities. So, what were the uh, strategies to support sustainability? So, the new approach was we need to reduce our dependence on donor. Rather than donor drive the CYPs, we need to ensure that donors only met needs of the low income and the poor, while those who could afford to pay higher prices were not subsidized by the donors. So we made an agreement with USAID and where they were committed to providing only one contraceptive in each product category, one pill, condom, and injectable. And all other commodities, all other contraceptives would be sold at cost, at different price levels. The donated products would be overbranded, and that's critical because Overbranding protects you, protects your investment in the brand that you make uh, in case the donor decides to discontinue. The other great thing that happened was uh, that we got USAID to commit to pay for the development cost of profitable products. So if we were to import, for example, an oral contraceptive pill uh, or market a condom that was priced high, USAID said, all right, I'll pay for the development cost. I won't pay for the commodity, but I'll, I'll pay for the cost of growing the brand so that one day you are able to earn money from that and then you are able to cross-subsidize a lower price condom or a lower price pill. The other thing they did is, is uh, they permitted us to use their program income to pay for ORS manufacturing. SMC is really, as a as an ISO certified CGMP compliant ORS manufacturing facility producing over 350 million sachets annually. And that's only 60% of the demand. So there's huge ORS market. And unfortunately, the ORS is not growing uh, in, in the diarrheal market. There's one, another market that we call the sweat market. People in humid climates, they sweat a lot. The rickshaw pullers and all that people, they actually consume ORS to gain energy and also seek government support for policies to support social marketing strategies. The uh, issue of pricing is also critical. Uh, for cross-subsidy to work effectively, okay, a size, you must have a sizable market willing to pay, of course. The other thing is you must demonstrate that you can do large volumes and you have created a a company goodwill. So the, the opportunity cost of not continuing is very high, not only for yourself, but also for the donors and the government. So if you're selling, uh, if you're, you're delivering 2.5 million CYPs, for example, and if you're not there, then those 2.5 million C CYPs are going to be taken away by the government or, or many of them may be lost. So the large volumes really had helped us to negotiate with USAID. You need multiple revenue streams. I mean, you can't expect to sort of cross-subsidize within the same brand, a higher price condom subsidizing a lower price condom or pill. You really need alternative uh, products. So SMC ORS was, was the, was the uh, major brand that helped us to cross-subsidize. A rational pricing strategy with clear definitions of for-profit, break-even, and uh, the, the way we define for-profit is a product that covers all of its direct costs, meaning commodity, advertising, packaging, and leaves a substantial amount of money 
to meet the overheads. So uh, the uh, very, very positive gross contribution margin. And then the, there are the break-even products that we self-finance also, but we sell it at direct cost recovery only. It does not contribute to overheads. This allows us to keep the price pricing down and meet the needs of the low income, but slightly at a slightly higher price. These are only uh, applicable to products that have very high uh, public health value. And of course, the subsidized products, because those are all donor given, has to be subsidized way below and only to recover commodity, not commodity, but uh, uh, distribution and marketing cost. You also need a long-term strategic plan. Without a plan, you are not getting anywhere. So it, it provides the roadmap. Of course, there are many uh, changes that you have to do. So you have to periodically review the plan, make course corrections as you move forward. That has been very critical for us. We started in 1997, and we got to full sustainability in 2012, but that was based on a plan. The other issue is that employees have to be serious about uh, sustainability. Many projects, I've worked for two, three projects where, you know, four years, five years, you did well, you wrote the project proposal, closing report down, and it's gone. You're not able to keep any of the benefits that you accrued from the project. Uh, yeah, so I think that the employees have to drive for sustainability and they have to be passionate about it. And also you need a transparent accounting system because if you're not tracking your for-profit and your non-profit separately, you're, you're sort of consolidating accounting system, you never know how much contribution uh, are you making from your for-profit operations. So you have to track your income and your expenditures separately for profit. There is no cost recovery objective for non-profit products. It has to be very clear. Sorry. The issue for overbranding, I, I, this is critical because I think maybe someone like Jeff or uh, 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 Ross, sorry, can write a paper on this and it's so important for donor funding projects not to continue to depend on the manufacturing brand name that the donor provides. For instance, USCID was giving us a, a pill called Duofem, which they purchased globally from Wyatt. And they did that for 20 years. So, you know, the, we, uh, we moved the market up to 33.4 million cycles. That's a huge OCP driven largely based on donations. And when there was a change in the contractor, uh, UCID came and said, sorry, I can't give you a dua firm anymore. And it fell actually from 33 to 15.8, about 17.6 million cycles. But the only reason why it survived and it is still there and going up, because the brand name was ours. We sold it not as dua firm, but as Femicon. So we went to a local manufacturer and says, can you make us Femicon? He says, yes. Yeah. So, you know, we did lose volumes, but at the end of the day, we didn't lose the brand. And that's very, very important, I think, to consider. And in our case, it's been very, very critical. So in 2012, you know, we reached 102% cost recovery. This is from self-financed products, products that we were using our own funds to market and uh, 102% means that you were able to cover all commodity and operating cost and generate a 2% profit or surplus. In our social marketing, we don't call it profit, we call it surplus. And uh, finally, you know, this is the current model and this is where we are right now. SMC has uh, formed a for-profit subsidiary. So it separated its for-profit and non-profit operations now that we have reached a full cost recovery. So under enterprise, which is a, God, so really sorry. Under enterprise, all for-profit products are sold and marketed under enterprise, okay? Uh, and the profit after taxes and any retained income, okay, is then 
transferred to SMC non-profit. SMC non-profit owns SMC enterprise. So they are the shareholder. So they, in the form of dividends, it goes to non-profit and the non-profit decides how to spend that money. They may fund a project if it makes sense and has a lot of social good. Uh, they may fund this project through that money. They may co-finance it with a donor. So if we have, for example, an idea to come up with a campaign like, you know, road safety or something, we say, all right, we will put in 33%. Would you put in the other 65, 67%? So it, it is, makes co-funding very uh, attractive. And then it also manages donor funding that are exclusively financed by donors. So the benefits of the multi-unit structure is basically that you have two companies, one SMC. Okay, you have different roles now. Uh, you allow them to grow to their full potential. You, you, you know, it's very clear that one does profit, one does non-profit. Uh, until you are, if you're small, you can do profit and non-profit within the same unit. But when you, once you reach those large volumes and once you reach profits, you have to separate your operations. It's an internal revenue source to finance own projects. So SMC has become a donor, and not only to funding its own projects, but also we are now asking other NGOs to come up for proposals, and then if it makes sense, then we are going to fund those projects as well. Important tax issues. If you don't separate and you're making a profit, uh, the uh, NBR, is the National Board of Revenue, would come after you and say, you know, you're making money under the disguise of non-profit. So you have to, we had to separate. Then it provides greater transparency and accountability. You know, you don't hide the profit under non-profit anymore. You can't do that. A common board ensures that the mission is not lost. SMC still you know, continues to have the mission of, you know, improving health and well-being of women, children, and families. So it continues to remain that, and it becomes attractive for donors to co-fund. Finally, uh, this is just a snapshot of what's happening now. You see, your, your um, okay, enterprise. Enterprise actually can sustain almost 80% of the CYPs through its own funds. Only 20% of the uh, CYPs are coming from non-profit or donor-funded programs. 97% of the revenues are sustainable without donor funds. So it, it, now we, you know, we don't need donor funding to continue to innovate and grow in the way that we have been doing. And I just also want to point out that ORS, as you can see, contributes to 58% of the revenue. So that's been SMC's story. I uh, just want to finally highlight this logo. This is our logo, and it promises people that whatever we do is going to help improve their quality of life, help them live better. And every product or services that we market must actually meet this criteria. Thank you very much. Not talk about theory, but hear about how social marketing is actually saving millions of lives in, in, in your country. So that, that was fabulous. But what are the one or two key lessons, given the fact you now seem to have a model that can sustain itself, you're no longer dependent on donor funding, you can carry out and continue that great work. What one or two key lessons would you say others can take from this and apply in other countries? You know, the reason we did it is because most of the work we do in, in social marketing are project-based. So they have a, a finite lifetime. You, know, you bid on a proposal four years, five years, you close the project, you might have achieved something, you go on to something else. You, you can't sustain whatever you have achieved. So the idea is that you have to plan ahead. You have to be serious about 
and make it part of the proposal, maybe. I think the donors are interested to see that if you've done well, of course, if you've not done well, then you, know, you probably won't even last five years. But if you've done well, I, you have a case to move on. So I think the, now all projects can't be like this. Many projects, I know many of you probably don't, do not relate to this, but many social marketing pro, uh, programs, like those run by PSI and others who have this concept of social uh, marketing, uh, we face with that, those scenarios. So you need to plan ahead. I would definitely say have a strategic plan. Have a five-year, 10-year strategic plan. You don't need to get to 100%, but make progress. You need to show the donors that within the next five to 10 years, we will not need so many you know, pills and condoms from you. We'll be able to sustain it with the revenues. So I would say these are some of the lessons. The overbranding, like I said, you know, when donor gives you a brand, donor gives you a lot of commodity, overbrand them. Go out and sell it in your brand name so you know that if the donor decides to leave, you are able to secure that investment that you've made. There's a lot of investment in the brand that we make. One thing social marketing does is it's very brand focused, just like commercial marketing. And that is important because you don't want to make low income or poor people feel that you've got something, you know, poor, poor quality, uh, poorly produced product. You want them to feel like they're using a product that any upper income uh, person would use. So there's a lot of investment in branding and so forth. There's a whole lot of things you need to do. I don't think there's one, uh, there may be one or two. Uh, donor commitment, getting the donor, to, convincing the donor to make that kind of investment that we did. I, mean, I don't think this, we would be where we are now if USAID wouldn't support the growth of the profitable products, okay, or invest in setting up an ORS plant. So there's a lot of things that we, uh, we could do, but ultimately I think it's, how serious are you? If, if we want to have happy with a project for four years and we know we are going there and getting a good salary and coming home, it doesn't matter whether the project lasts or not, it probably won't. But if you're really passionate about sustainability, if you can get that indoctrinated to your employee's head, then I think you'll, you're definitely going to make progress. Thank you.